Hello and welcome to the Watchman on the Wall channel. This prophetic word comes from channel listener Peggy Morris, Bridgeport, Texas. It's time for Purim. Jerusalem, J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. I have stationed intercessors on your walls who will never be silent day or night. You reminders of Yahweh, take no rest. Tirelessly give God no rest until he firmly establishes Jerusalem, J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M, and makes her the praise of all the earth, Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. God's people have been standing as watchmen on the wall, repenting and praying, fasting against the governmental decree that our state must stand by and be overridden and overtaken. This decree has tied the hands of Texas officials that have been courageously holding the line at our southern border. But our Lord has lifted up his golden scepter to us in the form of a Supreme Court ruling, giving Texas the right to defend itself, figuratively. The book of Esther tells us the story of wicked Haman, a man that hated the Jews and schemed an evil plot to completely annihilate them. Esther 8, 3. King Asarius advanced Haman and established his authority over all the officials who were with him. Esther 3, 1, then he made a decree, and letters were sent by courier to all the king's providence to destroy and kill, to annihilate all the Jews, both young and old, women and children, in one day. When Jews heard the news, they fasted, they prayed. Queen Esther went before the king on behalf of her people, and the king held out his golden scepter to her. Mordecai was then given Haman's position, allowing him to decree a new thing, stating that the Jews could defend themselves. See Esther 8, 10 through 12, and Esther 8, 16 and 17. The Supreme Court's ruling. It is a great victory for us. It has given us new hope and has now ushered us into a Nehemiah hour. Come, let's build the wall of Jerusalem, J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M, and not live with the disgrace any longer, Nehemiah 1, 7. And their response was, we're with you, let's get started. They rolled up their sleeves, ready for the good work, Nehemiah 1.8. Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brothers, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and set up its doors. Next, Eliashib, the men of Jericho, built. And the next of them was Zakur built. Now the sons of Hanasa built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set its doors and its bolts and its bars. Next to them, Merimuth, he made repairs. Next to Mishulam made repairs. And next to Zadok also made repairs. Next to him, the men of Tekoa made repairs. Joida and Mishalam, they repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and set its doors with its bolts and its bars. Nehemiah 3, 1 through 7. And on and on went the entire third chapter of Nehemiah. 32 verses of different people building their part of the wall next to the people that built on either side of them. The wall was built by dividing it into sections, appointing people to those specific sections. They diligently worked with and beside their family, their friends, and their neighbors. It must have been a delight, a delight to the heart of God, to see his children working side by side, truly united in their task. As Nehemiah and the people worked, their time of building the wall was not easy. There were people that came against them, and they were despised and ridiculed and insulted and threatened. See Nehemiah 4, 4 through 8. You see, they did not stop. They countered with prayer to God. They set a round-the-clock guard against them, and they positioned themselves to fight. So they stationed armed men around the walls in the lowest places at the open positions where it was least protected. And I stationed the people in families with their swords, spears, and bows. When I saw their fear, I stood, and I said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Confidently remember the Lord is a great and awesome God. And with courage from Him, fight with your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives, and for your homes. Nehemiah 4, 13 through 15. It is going to take all of us to restore ruins from long ago and rebuild what has been devastated. Isaiah 61, 4. There is much work to be done, and it is God's heart that we do it together. 
How truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living in sweet unity. It's a precious, precious thing as sacred, as sacred as scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping from the skies from a pound Mount Hermon, refreshing the slopes of Israel. For from the realm of sweet harmony, God has released his eternal blessing, the promise of life forever. Psalm 133. I understand. Now is more important than ever to guard our doors and gates and borders and boundaries. As we work alongside other believers, we need to firmly position ourselves, standing our ground, tending to our allotted portion of the gate. Nehemiah 6.15 Heavenly Father, Lord, what a beautiful allegory. Lord, we've seen it happen in our present day. Almost the same thing from Nehemiah's time. Lord, I pray, Father, that as we enter into Purim, Lord, that we would trust in you, that we would speak boldly, Lord, that we would operate boldly, Lord, that we would work with weapons of war in the spirit, Father, to push down the strongholds and, Lord, to do the work. Bring unity to the brethren, Father. Bring unity across the remnant, Lord. Lord, that we would see in our day and age a rebuilding Lord, a rebuilding that we would see, Father. Lord, even in the United States, as we are seeing so much play out, both in in laws that are unconstitutional, in laws, Father, that go against your word, Lord, I thank you that there are checks and balances. I thank you that there are those that are praying, standing in the gap, Father. And I thank you that we are about to see a mighty move of God here in the U.S. and across the globe, friend wherever you find yourself today, let's pray that God moves on our behalf today. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen and amen.